Um, but just wanted to very much welcome you to our, um, our education session really on how to leverage the most you can out of these shows. So it's some of the best practices and tips and things you can take with you. Um, and then also at the end, we're going to talk about the tent tour. So, oh, I'll introduce myself. I'm Kate Taylor, the chair of the Artist Network. We also have uh, Marjorie Vanderhoek with us, who um, is the director of marketing. We have Angela, who you all know, who is our show director. Um, I believe, oh, Jenny Lynn James, who is also on our board, is here. James McLean is our <coughs> So, and if anybody else is on the board and I just can't see you, then speak up and let me know. But anyway, I just wanted to welcome you very much and to let you know that we're going to make this a very interactive session. So um, Angela's going to go through the agenda so you can kind of see what we're going to cover. But if there's something specific you have a question about, please um, put the word in the chat and we will kind of get to that when we can. If we somehow forget your question, please bear with us and put it in again. Um, but for most of the show, we're going to actually ask that everybody mutes their, um, their audio so that we don't have a lot of um, different noises. So Ange, you are up. All right, well, thanks so much for joining us. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is just share my screen because we've uh, done a little PowerPoint here. All right. Oh, sorry, I was muted. I don't know how that happened, but I'm back. <laughs> I think you must have muted this Wait for everybody to read the that cover page. <laughs> All right, so um, thanks so much for joining us and I'll just get right into it. Oh, sorry, something's not. Sorry, Kate, just bear with me. Yep. It's not there. All right, so tonight we're gonna to cover the fact that we're now online and what that means and how really basically to present yourself and use this show to um, present your work and to sell your work and um, what the best practices are to have a positive experience. Um, we're gonna take a look at our on, your online profile um, and what selling yourself there means and uh, presenting a special collection for the show. We're gonna to touch base on marketing. Marjolyn's gonna share some insights with us. Um, we're going to talk about the tent tour, um, booth logistics, and things you need to know, and then um, a little bit on selling your work as it applies to both the tent tour and uh, online. So we'll get started. So uh, the website that we're directing all the activity to for the Riverdale Art Walk is our overall Riverdale Art Walk site. So it's just riverdaleartwalk.ca. So that's where you want to really encourage people to um, visit. And um, on the bottom here, there's a, uh, the first thing that people are gonna see is basically a link that actually goes to the actual store because that's where we wanna really direct people. This is our Eventity profile. Um, it has some- right, Can I interrupt you for one second? Yep. Sorry, I just wanna say, one of the things that's really important too in doing this show is you know, you'll, you have the opportunity to promote just your own store link within Riverdale Art Walk, but we do ask that you also promote the entire show just so that all artists can benefit from everybody's uh, database and, and marketing efforts. Okay, before I go any further, Kate, do you see the big bar on the bottom? Do you guys see that when you see my screen or no? Nope. Okay. Just right. your presentation. Okay, so it's covering a little bit for me, but not for you guys. Excellent. Okay. Um, <laughs> So I'm gonna just uh, share with you the, oh, sorry, my slides aren't forwarding there. Um, this is just a, a image of the Art Walk in the Square um, profile, just cause we haven't got that far on the Riverdale event any profile yet, but you'll see that we're going to have a lot of different profile pictures. We'll put uh, tent tour maps in there. We'll put the virtual opening information in there, the Leslie Gold Gallery preview, um, an overview of the tent tour if we're able to run it. And then um, there's a schedule of activities and events that we'll highlight there. And then the next thing that's profiled is basically all the artists um, profile and people can search based on criteria or categories as well as just your artist name. Otherwise, I think it's in alphabetical order. <coughs> Um, so we're going to talk very briefly about your online profile. Um, 
because we did actually do the events need orientation on, and that's actually sitting on the YouTube channel. So if you want to take a look at that, it actually walks through a lot of details about setting up your profile, like how, like how to um, set it up. And we've actually talked, Kate and I talked a lot about um, some of the things to profile yourself with, but we'll just touch base on a couple of those now. Kate, do you want to talk about this? Uh, sure. So I think that, you know, and Marjolyn will talk a little bit about this later, you know, with so many um, online shows going on and so many uh, shows that overlap, you know, one of the things that's really important is that you really try and make this um, pro store profile personal and different than some of the other stuff that you're doing within online. So whereas normally, you know, you'd be in your tent and you'd be able to make a connection to people. Um, we're really sort of advising that you really take the opportunity to really personalize your profile. So instead of maybe just doing your artist statement, maybe talk a little bit about um, your inspiration and how you're feeling and, and sort of to try and create that personal kind of aspect of it. Um, wherever possible, because this really is your sole place to sell, we're really recommending that you take the opportunity to do images that are in situ and um, obviously put your best work in there, but put some context to it. And you have the opportunity as well to add a story with about that image so that you could um, you know, potentially communicate that as well. And think about the conversations you might have in a tent and try and reproduce that online as opposed to just posting the image, putting the size and the price. Yeah, so we're not, we're recommending that you think about um, the story that you tell about yourself here versus just copying uh, your standard artist statement and dropping it in here, right? Um, You've got a lot of different banner images here. Kate's on this image here is Kate's story and it's showing um, her video uh, clip and then it's showing four images. But if uh, people can actually click on and show more pictures, um, that's one way you can um, expand your profile. Um, and you can also uh, have more than one video if you want. But the video, if you do showcase a video, it's going to be right here. It's going to um, pop up here. If you don't want that, you can also just have one large image here. Okay, I just want to I just want to emphasize the point here. Um, so if you remember when you do an art fair, there are two basic reasons that people come to, to the art fair. And the number one reason, of course, is to buy art. There's a scarcity effect because they can just find the art at the event. But the number two piece is to meet you and talk to you and engage with the artist. Because if they want to go and not see the artist, they can go to a gallery. So if we're going to replicate that on the virtual level, then we want to think about how personal can you make it? And this is your first chance to do that. So if everyone would do a video like Kate has, where her personality comes through, how you look comes through, how you talk about your work a little bit, it would be fantastic because then people immediately, they go, oh, who is this person? So it really animates it and makes it about the artist. That's what we're trying to do is create a virtual event of an art fair, not just on its own. So just want to add that little piece in there. Thanks, Anne. I think it's important. Important to think about the fact it's not just a store, right? It's a whole environment we're trying to create. And right. we can only do that if you do your part. But I agree. Like I just rewrote my artist statement and made it a lot more personal to where I am right now at the cottage. And so it's as if I'm having a conversation with someone. And I think if you can try and do that, um, I think that will, um, you'll find that comes back um, in terms of building those relationships. Right. And then as we move through your profile, um, we get into your collection or the artwork that you're profiling. Yeah, um, so I actually have not yet updated all of my uh, my images, but um, you know, if the goal is to try and create stuff that is has maybe not been seen before, um, obviously put your best work in. If you have a new collection that you are launching, it's always better to be able to kind of have something that's special um, at these shows as opposed to, oh yeah, those are the same seven paintings I saw in the last three outdoor shows or outdoor online shows you've done. So in the same oh, yeah. way that, yeah, sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah. So um, we say don't compete against your website in regards to like, maybe don't showcase this work on your website. Like if they can do that, they can just go to your website. So maybe try to make something special about why they're gonna come here, why they're interested in seeing you in this show. Right, so I just wanna add with that piece is that when you promote this show, promote that you have a special collection that is just available on this show because you want to draw people 
to the platform. You don't want to compete against yourself and your and your website. You want to provide something unique and individual that is just to the Riverdale Art Walk. So similar as I had said that, you know, when they come to an art fair, they come for a special selection of pieces. But the key to this is to promote it previous to the event happening. And then while the event is happening to also have of that. I would also recommend, I don't know how Angie and Kate are about this, but I would also recommend that once you have shown that work on the raw site for a while on this platform to just withdraw it for a while. So you don't make it available on your website immediately that you create some kind of scarcity and you emphasize that in your promotion. Yeah, I think that's a really good recommendation. Um, and then and I guess I just say, and Janet has just actually posted here that she's actually uploaded on her Facebook page some recommendations for a videographer if you're looking for someone to uh, help you with your video. Oh, awesome. So um, just a few points also to remember when you're actually doing your um, profiling your artwork is to make sure that you have good quality images, clear, the color represents well um, or, uh, online. You wanna make it a consistent portfolio of work and in line with your submission. Right, so that we know it's the same artist because that's what you were accepted into the show with. Um, really highlight your best work. Um, we always recommend a variety of sizes and prices to attract different levels of buyers. Um, we know that sometimes you need entry level pieces with somebody. Um, they might not be able to buy the piece that they, the large piece that they love. Um, and so it's always good to um, kind of have some variety. Um, and remember that only 20% of the pieces represented here can be re reproductions or prints and no functional work. So here's, a, so then we get into the individual profiles of how the, your actual art, um, like once somebody clicks on a piece of artwork, it's profiled and that gives you another little area to tell a story. Um, so again, uh, quality images are important and the reason you can actually showcase a lot of different images here. Um, you can see on this place here, Kate has like five different images. So it might be whether your work's framed or not framed, or it might be a close up or a detail in the piece of work, um, or it might be, you can even attach videos um, of in individual pieces. I've done that for some of my work because it's encaustic and it's difficult to see. So you can actually um, post um, videos of your work as well here. Um, Again, in situ, we recommend that because it actually gives you a good feeling for what the piece will look like. Um, uh, I think it also, I it, also helps, it also helps people to determine the size. So, you know, it's one thing I know you're sort of saying it's 36 by 36. A lot of people can't really visualize how big that is. And it's one of the reasons that having it in situ or having a picture of you with the art is a way of people being able to get that, um, that idea of size. Uh, for me, I also think it's important to show how is it finished? What do the edges look like? What does the back look like? So that when they get the piece, there's not a surprise. Um, they know what they're getting and they you've clearly communicated everything to them. Yeah. And so um, in some of these pieces, let's say you have small pieces of work, maybe what you do is have it like above a desktop and maybe have an object that kind of can give it reference to size like a lamp or books or, or vase or something like that that's very simple but make sure your artwork is a piece that the thing that shines in the room I think most of the um, there's a lot of different apps out there art room being one of them that you can use to um, do this I'm sure that there's a lot more that and people can kind of share that information. Um, you can also with some of these apps you can showcase more than one piece of art in a room so that's an option. Um, but on this event platform, you also have this area called description, where you can put in some information, specifically a story about that piece or your inspiration about that piece. So I would say use these opportunities to sell your work instead of thinking about, oh my goodness, how many pieces can I have up there? Oh, I can have 30. I'm going to dump 30 pieces on there. Um, maybe present your work the best that you can and tell a story with your work, um, because it's better to have 10 pieces up there and sell your pieces than to have three pieces up there and not tell a story and not really engage with people and sell. Okay, so I'm just gonna add into that. So yes, the platform has its space that you can do this and you can create images, but the best way of really conveying merchandising of your work is to do a Facebook Live or Instagram Live and work through the series that you're presenting on the platform. So that would mean, so you create a video, uh, I like to do it on the Facebook Live because it has a lot of organic reach that way. 
and you just show the pieces individually. You put one up, you talk about it, you show it from the side and from the front, and then you go to the next piece and you do a whole series like that. Once you have that video, you can then post that onto your Facebook page. You can use that video and do a link to that on your email marketing. And then you actually have this engagement piece that can work on your organic reach, but it can also give your personality presenting to you, presenting the work. Right. So if you did have that video and you could splice it, you could actually take the section that was about a specific piece and post it here as well. All right. So we're going to get into a little bit more of the marketing. Um, so maybe I can just quickly review the marketing package. So everybody should have received an email um, that kind of outlined some other um, potential opportunities for you. One being the marketing package. We do have, um, it is available to all participants, but we have limited space available. So we're only selling um, a sh small amount of packages. Um, so um, if you're interested, please sign up. Um, what's included is um, inclusion in our email marketing package with two, at least two emails um, with, uh, that go out to our um, 3,500 plus audience of our buyers. Um, one image would be included. Um, the image is linked to your website. We Facebook and Instagram ads. So they'd be carousel ads with multiple artists promoting the, the art walk. Um, and artists where possible, like if you give us your content, we'll tag you so that you can then share again. Um, again, we wanna have that organic reach. And then Instagram, um, it says here slash Facebook, but we're gonna do all Instagram live interviews and they're gonna be approximately 10 minutes. They'll all take place between June 14th and, and 17th. So we'll have a, the content prior to the show start date so that you can use that as um, content as well for your social. Um, your location, you could be sitting in your studio and the interviews will be saved and shared on our YouTube, um, in our Instagram stories, um, so that uh, we hope, again, we can get some inner, um, organic reach that way. We also have the Art Walk preview, which we are hoping that we'll be able to hang in Leslie Grove Gallery. Again, um, this we're just watching the COVID guidelines very, very closely. Um, so if we don't, if we aren't able to actually hang it in the gallery, we will still be hosting a preview. Um, and again, that's going to run from June 9th, so leading up to the show, and then through to the first weekend of the show, Sunday, uh, June 20th. Um, so that is at Leslie Grove Gallery, and that's uh, Queen Street East. I think uh, most people are familiar with that. If you're not, you should be because it's a great space. Um, anyway, submission deadlines are next week, Monday. Um, so if you're interested in that, there's no fee whatsoever for this. It's open to all participants. Um, if we have more people um, who um, want to be part of this that, and we can't fit you in, then what we're going to do is we're just going to do a lottery process um, and we'll do that online. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, if you have any questions, Use our random number generator to make sure that it is truly and honestly random. Yeah, so um, we will have some fun with that, hopefully. And then, Marjolyn, I don't know, do you want to talk about the next few slides are about Instagram and Facebook and the uh, newsletter marketing? Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, so the graphics, uh, do you want to make sure that your graphic is 1080 by 1080? Uh, pixels so that it fits nicely in there. Um, the uh, make sure that you have you follow the Riverdale artwork uh, art walk and you tag us. We will, um, if possible, we'll repost uh, according to just the health of the feed. But um, we've been pretty good about doing that so far. If you find that you keep tagging and you're not getting any response, let me know and then we can highlight that. So it can kind of follow and flow into everything else. And so just make sure when you do post that you tag your video with a location of Riverdale Art Walk because people can then search as a location of Riverdale Art Walk and then tag in the text follow at Riverdale Art Walk as well. Um, as far as boosting it um, from your side, I would uh, do it from a Facebook ad manager so that you can use your if you do paid ads that you use your warm audience that follows you already on your social media. So then it will reach them easier if not. All right. So we also have, um, we'll be posting uh, or hosting an Instagram live opening on Thursday, June 17th. So that's 
uh, the evening before the show opens up. So mark your calendars and plan to participate because we'd love to have you on. Um, but we're also um, sharing um, on the schedule on the website. Um, I'll also be sharing Instagram and Facebook live events. So if you're going to host your own events, we're happy to um, add those to our calendar of activity. So um, you need to sign up for that if you want to get onto the calendar. And then I'll just be updating the website every, every maybe a couple of times a week. Um, so if you um, sign up through that link that I sent out this morning, um, I'll try to get you on the schedule. And it's also really important to, on your own Facebook page to create the Riverdale or Walk um, event. So you also have quite an ability to drive your audience to the uh, to the online show. So don't forget to lose, to use that opportunity. Uh, Martin, do you want to talk a little bit more about this? So this uh, posting, like how like best yeah. practices and posts. Right. So as you build towards the show, and if you follow the. Um, special group of pieces that you have at the show. A good way of doing that is to do sneak peeks of the work that will be available at the show. So don't don't reveal your entire card, but do sneak peeks. Be sure to check me out. Check out this new collection of work at the Riverdale Art Walk. So you tag it that way. Uh, here's a small sneak peek of one of the pieces of it, or you could do a detail. Here's a detail of a piece that will be shown at the Riverdale Art Walk. So you basically build anticipation. And you really want to emphasize the storytelling piece of all the pieces that are going in there. So keep it personal and authentic. And um, and you can touch on like you can do uh, you can do the process and how you worked with the materials that um, how you came to that point, or you can do um, a hook and what it inspired you, that kind of thing. Right? You want to use. Um, uh, hashtags so and put Riverdale Art Walk as part part of that and if you lose if you use um, platform flick dot flick dot tech which will give you hashtags that you can create hashtags that are uh, small or medium a large um, appreciation so to say following so you want to keep small to immediate following so that you make sure that your hashtags are followed closely hopefully you all know what i'm talking about and you come to our webinars so, so, <laughs> so there's one coming up this week <laughs> you may know what i'm saying so, so so you know content creation of course think about what you're doing right so your story about the work where it was done Vision, uh, in the studio, uh, materials that you use, how you came to be an artist, give it personal, give it background, right? So if you wanna mix up different things then that gives more variety. Um, so Reels is really popular at the moment um, on Instagram. It's getting a lot of, um, a lot more uh, push. So use reels intermittently, like, like I use it every three times or so, and it gets a lot more, algorithms push it a lot more. And if you do images, do more than one image, like do several images so that people have to stop, stare and read your account, right? Try and share and engage with other artists. Try and get your uh, tag onto the Riverdale Art Walk Instagram page. So when someone, so when Liz promotes and when our social media gets promotes on there, make a comment with you know four or five words. So then your tag is on there. Like you, then other people, cl collectors, going to go through that and they may see your remark and they go, oh, I'm going to jump on that person's work and then. They might go on your Instagram account and then they go to Inventony and they find your work there. So it's all about being relevant and in front of people, right? And then manage your top, top nine, which means your top nine slides that are on your Instagram page. So that when people open your Instagram page, they see it full and they see a representation of your work. And then it's best to link your Instagram to your Facebook page so that it flows automatically. Now, when you have a post on Facebook that comes from Instagram, it's best to bounce onto Facebook, clean it up, get rid of the hashtags, just make the statement and on your Facebook page, put the link to your website on there or to your event and need page so that people who are on the Facebook page can go directly to the collection or they can go to your website, which on your website, I would put a banner on there and say, check out my special collection of artwork at event and need, and then your, your tag on that way so that you drive people to the event and need collection of pieces and you highlight that. Okay. 
Well, I can't for it. There we go. Facebook, <laughs> very simply. I don't know if you want to talk about that. I think you kind of did that already, Mar Marjorie. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just to, to, you want to put on every post that you put on Facebook, the link, okay? So the link to the Eventini page, if you are driving people there, um, or you can alternate one on your website and then one to the Eventini page, but you want to uh, ride on, on top of what we're doing for social. So the Eventini is, is the best place to go. And you want to keep your graphics according to the specs. I use 1080 by 1080 pixels for Facebook and Instagram. I find it the easiest. And when it comes to boosts, um, I think in the chat, there was some this conversation about that. So I'm not a believer in boosting posts on the page. I um, mainly because it doesn't give you the intel for your audience building. So I work with a Facebook ad manager and promote it through that way. And then share the Facebook event um, on your, on your Facebook page, but you also want to do it through the email marketing that you do and, and try and do the link there. So how important is it, Marjolyn, to have different content on your Facebook feed versus your Instagram? Yeah, so I always vary it. I always change it up. Sometimes I'll link directly from Instagram and then I'll do a separate post on Facebook that's just for my Facebook followers. So I vary it as much as possible. Okay. Uh, I, guess, I guess for a lot of people, it would depend if they have the same type of following on both profiles, right? Because you don't want to be sending through the same people the same content, right? So if you have a different following on your Facebook versus your other, right? I guess it depends. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's overlap just, you have. Yeah, the, the going back and forth. I mean, people will go back and forth. So they may be on your Facebook page and they'll look at, oh, this is an Instagram post and then they'll bounce onto your Instagram feed. So it's just good to have a variety because it's all about having opportunity to show who you are in different ways. Right. And it's all about trying to promote as much as possible your personal space so that people um, engage with your personality when they are <laughs> looking to buy something. And you want, do you want me to talk about this, Ange? Sure, if you want to. Okay, so your email marketing is critical to this, right? So you want to make sure that you promote um, as soon as possible, like in the first week of June. Stay tuned, I'm having a new show that's at the Riverdale Art Walk happening, opening on uh, June 17th. And uh, it'll be a special group of pieces. And then you want to the week of that, of that week, then you want to say on the 14th, you want to say, hey, stay tuned. We're opening on the 17th, first come first serve for the work that will be available. And then on the day it's open, you want to send an email. So it sounds like a lot, but it's all about trying to get people ready and pumped so that when the doors open, they have first dibs in buying. And you want to create this kind of energy going, this work is special just for you. Um, you have first dibs, this is the link, that kind of thing. So it's all about creating um, the anticipation and the scarcity of it as well. Yeah, and I think some people think, oh, that's so overwhelming, but some of this content, like especially your newsletters, it's pretty easy to prepare some of that content ahead of time, right? So that like, um, even if you wanted to do like, here I am all set up, like if you are doing the tent tour or um, something with your event, you can set up your newsletter ahead of time and then change out one image, right? Yeah. And remember to keep your links, right? So you're all, put your links together and then it all goes to your personal profile on Eventini. So um, that all can be prepared ahead and scheduled ahead of for sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so just another piece of um, uh, promotional material is we're going to be creating these lawn, lawn signs again, and this really talks specifically more to the tent tour. Um, so I just wanted to kind of bring that awareness to people that um, I should be sending that out this week. You can, but I think uh, you can even use that even if you're not uh, it doing the tent tour, because I think it's still, it's a great way of driving people um, to the Riverdale Art Walk site, which will have um, you know, the link obviously, of course, to the store. Yeah, so we're going to leave a blank spot there. So you can either put an address in there if you're going to be pushing it like down your street and on your corners, or you can actually put at the ribbon. The reason it says at like that is because you can just put um, your um, social media or you can actually, we can just put the Riverdale Art Walk so that you're promoting the entire show. All right. And they so, work. I beg your pardon? And they really work. Yeah, <laughs> People really do. see them. 
they do because they're bright pink. Um, so just to talk briefly about um, Tent Tour um, Logistics. So we are um, anxious to meet art lovers and be in person with artists and chat about art and see art in person. And we hope that we'll be able to do that through um, um, artists hosting their own booths and showcasing their work in a tent tour. Um, we are closely following um, COVID safety protocols and restrictions. Um, so we will keep an eye on that and let you know if there's any changes, but we do expect that we should be able to um, promote and encourage people to be part of a tent tour uh, by the time for the opening weekend. And again, it's gonna be weather permitting and you need to sign up. Um, in order to be part of the promotion for that. So if you're considering it um, and you have any questions, you can reach out to me, but um, uh, you do need to sign up for that. So before it, we get into is, too much detail. Saturday, it's Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, right? Yeah, Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, yeah. yeah. So the show opens on, so the opening is Thursday night. The show actually opens Friday morning. We're all open it up Thursday night during the um, Zoom link so people can see stuff. But it, the show actually opens on Friday morning. And then the tent tour would be the Saturday, Sunday the, of the opening weekend. And then it runs till June 2nd. I mean, sorry, July 2nd. Um, just before we get into too much details about the tent tour, um, Kate and I did do a Q&A with Kate and Angela um, on outdoor show prep, show prep and it's at Kate Taylor Art on her Instagram um, as part of her uh, Talking to Artists Thursday interviews. You can find uh, that interview there. So there's lots of so information the, there. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. I just want one of the other things I wanted to say is that although we're really closely looking at um, the COVID protocols and stuff. It's really up to you guys to make sure that you also are aware of what we're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do um, and kind of have your comfort level to do that. Um, so just, you know, think that through carefully. We would really rather someone think about it carefully than sign up and then find that they've, um, they've actually decided to, to drop out. That creates a lot of work on our end to be able to kind of promote people that then are not gonna have a tent in the space in situ. Yeah, so I would say if you sign up, um, and we go through all that work to adding to our promotional content and everything, then please follow through unless there's a reason from um, provincially and from the government that says, no, we can't actually, you know, have gatherings of 10 people or so, um, then we would cancel the entire thing. But if you do sign up and the government and we're allowed to host it, um, just please be respectful of our time and, and commitment and our um, marketing materials. We don't want to send people to an empty location. That's really what we don't want to do. The deadline for signing up is June 5th, right, Ange? Yeah, yeah. And I'll extend that if I need to. That's just to give us enough time to actually create material. <laughs> so, and to actually promote it, right? So, yeah. Okay, so um, we can, uh, Kate, I don't know if you want to jump in here, but uh, we just want to talk about planning your display. Um, really, um, it's think about how you're going to actually be presenting your work. Um, and yeah, setting up that allows for, oh, go ahead. So I think, I think really it's sort of, uh, it would be similar if you were doing um, the Riverdale Art Walk in Jimmy Simpson Park. The only challenge of course, is that, um, you know, we, here we're actually in my house and it's much squishier and tighter than it would be in the park. Um, but it's still important to, this is an amazing, amazing opportunity if we're able to do this, to really talk to art lovers who have been dying to come out and see your work in person. So where Marjolyn was saying, you know, like, build your, your communication and build your relationships with your collectors, this is the time to do it. So we would really um, recommend that you take the time to think about your booth structure, plan it very well, promote it, um, and make sure that it looks really professional, not kind of something you throw <laughs> together at the last minute. Um, so you have to make sure that your setup allows for a clear view from the outside. And that's partially because people are going to be limited in terms of how many people can be in your tent. So you wanna be able to make sure that people can see in your tent. We really strongly recommend leaving the back of your tent open so that people aren't gonna be trapped in your space. And you can also get step out and not be trapped. Um, you do not have to use a tent, but uh, a tent is probably for people who've done these outdoor shows probably easier because your structure and your setup and everything is already in place. Um, you know, make sure you have your tables, your chairs, make sure you have a guest book. You do not want to do this without a guest book where you have the opportunity to build your database. Um, and it's really also uh, pretty critical that you fully understand and follow the COVID guidelines with people wearing masks um, and making sure that you have hand sanitizer on space, contactless payments, things like that. Yeah, so here's um, a few other pictures. You can see somebody um, 
just put some work on a wall and displayed it that way because it was an open garden area. Um, and here Jamie's work is presented and instead of opening up the back, he opened up two sides. So again, people don't feel so trapped. Like, you know, you can get out one side, you're not, I, we would really recommend not having three closed sides. Um, and that's the way that he was able to present his work. This was during Art Walk in the Square um, last fall. Um, and here's another artist they set up and they, um, um, put their work on grids um, in their front. So this is another way to display your work safely. Yeah, so there's a question about suggestions of the tent or if you live in a condominium. Um, I think that there's a couple of opportunities there. One is that you could potentially partner with another artist. Um, given the uh, the COVID numbers right now, probably you, know, you wanna think about how many artists you wanna have in one place and still allow for guests. The other option is maybe your condo development will allow you to have a few parking spaces and do the tent there. I think you have to kind of be, this is an opportunity for all of us to be a little bit creative on how we actually execute this. Yeah, so it's up to the individual artists to um, find a creative way to present their work. Um, yeah, so we're not actually organizing sites or like groups. So um, one recommendation we would say is generally stick to white tents. Make sure you're ready for all weather, wind, the show goes on, rain, the show goes on. Um, bring a guest book, like Kate said. Um, I find it's really helpful to make columns so that people know what they're supposed to put in because otherwise sometimes I just get people's name. I, one time I made a mistake, I just got a bunch of names. <laughs> so um, email, comments. Um, make sure you bring packaging to protect your sales. Uh, bring enough, enough work if you sell work. So don't overcrowd your booth. You can always just um, hang up a new piece, like have a, a box or um, other material, especially if you're in your home, right? You just like have stuff yeah. ready to go. I just wanted to question one thing, actually, because we talk about, uh, normally these tent tours are rain or shine, but you had an earlier slide that said weather permitting. So just want to clarify that. Yeah, so rain would still be, like, we would still run the show. I think weather permitting would be, like, if it was, like, a storm, like, really, like, terrible storm. Like, a storm you know? watch and stuff. Like, yeah. 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 So I think if it's expecting to rain part of the day, we'd still expect this to show to go, like, the tent tour to go on. Um, and just to highlight again, make sure that you all like sometimes, you know, you might be um, prepared for your artwork and your packing materials and all those types of things because you've done shows before, but um, make sure that you pack um, COVID safety um, items like hand sanitizer, wipes, masks, you have to wipe things down between people and we just really want people to have a safe um, and prosperous show. Um, one, hot, one thing I did want to mention is that all cargoes um, does have rentals, other tents. Um, they don't have these fence walls that you see in this picture, but they do have other things that you could actually rent. They actually have the um, hanging, like the uh, small grids that you can actually rent to. Um, yeah, Habib was gonna send me the cost on that. I don't know what that is, but um, you can actually go there and pick up. So they're um, mid Toronto. Um, I think their actual location might have a Scarborough address, but it's like midtown Toronto and um, the rate for the to rent something is $100 if you go pick it up. They actually will deliver for you and set up um, with, and that will cost $250. Anyway, it's just an option for people who don't have the materials on site or just want to have a booth, but they don't have one. That's just an option. One of the other things I wanted to really mention that's super, super critical is uh, you really, really need to think about weights on your tent. So when you do the show at Jimmy Simpson, that's a mandatory um, ob obligation to have weights. But the reality is, is that, you know, you still may face um, wind and rain. So we still are recommending the pool noodles in the tent and make sure your tent is weighted down. Yeah, you so- and Run into your neighbor's Lamborghini. Yeah, that's, that's a really um, important point because you don't, um, the, this, display of your work is up to you. And we're really recommending everybody has insurance if they sign up for that, um, covered under their home insurance or something like that, that um, make sure that you're covered because, and then make sure that you're covered by putting weights down like Kate suggests, because you don't want to have some sort of weird accident. Um, Kate, do you want to talk about this a little bit about planning your booth? I know this has three um, things on, but it's kind of a, a, an ideal. Uh, oh, I think this comes down itself. to... Uh, yeah, I think this comes down to really thinking about your presence at the booth as opposed to just kind of throwing stuff up when you have it. So one of the things I would do as I'm doing right now um, is I'm building what my booth is going to look like. 
And then I can actually see where my gaps are in terms of sizes, in terms of colors, in terms of flow of the space. So that when I go to, to hang the booth, first of all, it's really clean. I know what I'm looking for. And I also know that I have um, the work that kind of hangs together nicely and cohesively. And if possible, then I also also try and have stuff that will replace if it sells. So I do this in Excel and I just create an Excel document where one inch by one inch, or one square by one square is, uh, is a foot. And that allows me to actually place the actual pieces in place at the actual size. So you can really get a really good sense of what it looks like. And here's just, I'm just gonna quickly go through these like hanging systems. If people have questions, they can reach out. But again, you can see the pool noodles there that, um, that are in the top of one booth to uh, help with the rain. And then these are just like black grids. These are the grids that you can rent from um, all cargos. Pick them up if you need something. Um, they're also the type of grids that you saw in the earlier photo that someone had strapped together into V's and like position them um, in their um, yard and front yard. Um, one thing I do want to just highlight with these grids because it happens every year when we're actually doing, doing these shows in the park is that there's a picture here with three grids in a row and you can see that he's, I don't know if you can see, but he's used change, chains because I've seen people zip tie and it's too much weight. That will actually pull down and um, create a really big issue for people. So what I would say is never hang three grids um, on top of each other in your tent um, horizontally like that. I think you just want to watch your weight um, and use chain chains if you've got a lot of weight on your grids. Um, the best thing I think is really to put them vertically and then they're actually kind of resting on the ground as well. Um, some white background. So also think about how you're presenting your work, like using a white background, like your tent walls is also very helpful. So that's another reason why tents are great. Um, you can use other things to hold your work, like um, wood frames that someone's done here and they've cut notches in to, uh, and then they just um, use that and someone else is just hanging their work with chains. That's sometimes difficult. Some cheaper options, if you have like fencing or like, um, some like wood fencing or something else, you can go to a hardware store and buy this, um, these fence rolls. You can hang, you can even staple gun that to a fence and you can hang your work on that. So there's lots of options or just nailing your work right to the fence, like putting nails in your fence. These are just some options. Um, again, think about stuff if you have sculpture work and, and tables and things. So I'm just gonna run through this, lots of options to hang work. Um, think about how you're actually hanging individual pieces. So this is using like small D-rings on the corners to keep them flat and straight versus using a wire and the piece shifting. Um, think about other tags that like um, how you're going to put your pricing tag on um, Velcro using like people use simple things, even like curtain hooks, or they use like the tags from like nail from um, name tags. They've used those to kind of um, indicate pricing. And again, here's some pool noodles in the corners for rain and other things you should know. I don't know if there's any questions, Kate, about um, who's set up, but. Otherwise, I know I know a couple of people are asking if the presentation is going to be available and it likely won't be but this uh, the cloud the recording um, of this presentation will be so you should be able to kind of take take a close look to at, at it right um, question for pool noodles the pool noodles really are to put in the corners of your tent so it keeps the tent roof um, from sagging so that if it does rain uh, the weight of the water on the tent roof doesn't collapse the tent it actually tends to roll off it um, I would suggest every single person, if you have a tent, use your pool noodles. Um, they are incredibly easy and cheap to put in the corners of your tent and they can truly save your show. Mm -hmm. All right, other things you should know. Um, one really good resource is um, our um, closed Facebook group. Um, and I think a lot of you have signed up for that already or like asked to be part of it. And I think I've let pretty much everybody in. I think I checked today, there's a few people waiting, but um, that group is a great source. We're a really great community where we um, help provide um, um, suggestions and recommendations and share, share um, ideas with people. It's a really good um, group to ask people other questions, people who have been in the shows before or might have done like, some, like a small pop-up during COVID who might have some recommendations or if you're trying to connect with other artists um, in your area to maybe do, to be part of the tent tour, that might be an option for you. Um, so I would really recommend you join that forum. If you're a member of the Artist Network, we also have a Facebook group um, for Artist Network um, members uh, that's open up throughout the year 
for discussion and comment and chatting. Um, both of those links just uh, both those links are in the emails that I've been sending you. So you should be able to just click on those and um, find us pretty easily. So on site, um, still, I know you're in your own home, but consider uh, arranging someone to have a break because sometimes it's difficult to just run in the house when your stuff is there. So make sure someone else might be around to kind of watch something so you can take a quick break. Um, still remember things like hat, sunblock, phone, uh, make sure things are charged, all your devices are charged, your square reader, if that's what you're use using is charged. Um, think about water and snacks. Sometimes it's even difficult to run in the house and just get something to eat <laughs> um, and clothing for all weather possibilities. Let's hope you are so busy you don't have time to go in and get <laughs> water and snacks. <laughs> all right. Um, oh, sorry, I'm just gonna say, we have a quick question about interior spaces. Um, we don't really know, but given the way that COVID is in the protocols, um, I would suggest it's probably highly unlikely you're going to be able to use an indoor space. I think it's also unlikely people are going to be comfortable coming into an indoor space. So yeah. I would really think about that. Yeah, the tent tour in our mind, the, the tour is really, it's about an outdoor tour. It's not about really pushing people and encouraging people to go indoors at this point. So there's a few tips we have for during the show that we'd like to chat about. And one is really to have your story. And again, this connects to everything that you're, you're doing socially and online as well. But if you are doing the in-person tent tour, make sure that you're prepared to talk to people um, and tell them your story about the collection that you're actually presenting. Um, people like to buy from people who they um, connect with and who they feel comfortable with. Um, Kate, I don't know if you have any other comments about um, no, this, I think we covered a lot of this. I think it's just the other thing that uh, I always try and do is uh, like Shirley Temple's mom used to say her, to her before she went on stage, it's like, it's sparkle time. Like your job at the booth is to sparkle all the time. Like if it's raining and you're feeling like crap and you've sold nothing, doesn't matter. Like you have to really keep a positive attitude. Um, if that goes for every show, uh, the energy, certainly people pick up on that. And so, you know, really think about that when you're doing the show. It isn't just about what you sell, it's about making those contacts and connections. Sorry, Marjorie. Right, I, I just wanna emphasize that art fairs and virtual shows, anything like this is lead generation. It's the cheapest form of getting a qualified buyer. So if we manage to promote it as much as we can together as a group, then we can pull people to this tent tour. And if you can get them signing up on your email list, that is a plus. And then you can follow through with that. That is, that's the number one goal. It's just to build uh, leads, so. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And don't be afraid to connect with people. Sometimes people just walk by, take the opportunity to try to connect with people. Not everybody's comfortable reaching out and chatting first. So I would say have like your intro sentence or whatever um, there. It might be something that's unique about your work or something you're trying, like your collection that you're presenting, or, you know, you can just ask people what, you know, something, I don't think you have to um, feel shy to ask people right, to sign their book. You're gonna have a lot of people walk by, but the only way they're gonna know to sign your book is to, you, for you to tell them or ask them to. And one of the things you can do is actually, um, you know, you can also offer a small piece of art or print or something as a, in a draw to get them to sign into your book. Know that you're gonna lose some of those people probably because they're only entering for the draw, but other people will be kind of, uh, will stay on your mailing list and become really valuable. We did have one quick question about the uh, courteous out. And that really is, um, you know, hopefully, I think less likely on a tent tour than on an actual art show, but you'll have people will come and really want to grill you about your process or show you every single piece of art that they've had in their phone to see whether or not they'll be an artist. So if there's nobody in the booth, I'm happy to spend the time with those people because it makes it look like there's energy and stuff happening in my tent. Um, when there's other people trying to get in, especially if you have a limited number of people that you can actually have in your tent space, um, the courteous out is really just to be able to kind of really gently say like, you know, it's been really fabulous uh, looking at all your work, but if you don't mind, I really need to, you know, excuse me, I just need to kind of welcome these other people in the tent and just, you know, it's okay to shut down those conversations. Um, and especially if they're not going to be valuable to you and they're potentially keeping you away from building your relationships or a communication with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, generate, generate leads online. I, I was just going to say that I think that I've personally tried to have people sign up directly from my website onto my MailChimp and things like that. I, I think that I always find that it seems to be more effective and I get more leads if I actually have literally have the book and people sign it. And I usually will actually put, I always use the same name and address um, as a 
as an example of what to do. So like the name, the email address, and hey, I love your arts, put me on your mailing list or whatever. Yeah, so I would suggest that as well, have like a physical pens there. And then what I did, like I was worried about this with Art Walk in the Square last fall. And what I did is I just, that right beside the book, I have my hand sanitizer. And I actually asked people to use that before they sign the book. Uh, yeah. And I just think that it's a polite way to kind of engage with people and to give them an opportunity to continue to, uh, for you to share your story with them, right? You want people to sign up. And I, for some reason, I don't think people like the digital signups. I've never had success with it, even in all the art walks we've done. Yeah. The other thing I've seen too, is having actually almost two containers. So one, you've got the clean pens and the other ones you have the dirty pens. So people know if they're grabbing a pen, if they don't have one with them, then you, it's been sterilized. Um, right. One other quick question about um, selling through Eventony versus uh, off Eventony. So um, the intent really is that, you know, the reason that Eventony can continue, frankly, to keep their doors open and run a business is that they do take a percentage of all of the transactions that sell through the store. So we're really asking that in the same way that you wouldn't try and screw your galleries, you don't try and screw Eventony and you try and, um, you know, be honest about if the, if the sale comes through Eventony, finish the transaction on Eventony, not try and take it off the platform and, um, and do it out, outside of your platform. Yeah, saying that if you're part of this tech tour and you're doing something um, during the show, you can actually, um, and we talked about this during the last orientation, is you can actually turn that product off. So you can um, turn it off from people being able to purchase online so that you don't have to try to manage both situations at the same time, like somebody buying in person and somebody buying online. So you can turn it off. And then at the end of the day or at the end of the show, like um, let's say at the end of the art art walk tech tour you could turn them all back on so you don't actually have to delete the product or remove the product you can actually just turn it off so if you want to know how to do that there's how to guides on eventony and there's also we cover that in the last orientation yeah and so therefore obviously if you're turning it off of eventony and you have it in your tent someone buys it that's totally kosher so yeah. Um, one more quick question, actually, Ange. Is there a vehicle within Eventony where um, people can sign up? You can actually ask for signups for your mail? Uh, for your so mail right list? now with Eventony, they don't share any lead emails, but people can follow you on Eventony and they can definitely reach out to you on Eventony and, and it Eventually connects to you, all your social platforms and it connects to, they have your email and they, um, and they actually have your website. So there's a lot of way for people, but again, it's more, they have to engage. So there's not really an email, like sign up for my newsletter on, on Eventony at this time. They're working on a lot of uh, new things, but that's not there right now. But you can link to your website from the Eventony platform? Yeah, yeah, your website will, if you put your website in your profile, it'll be there. So there's also an email way too. So people can actually can email you and say, add me to your mailing list or if they have any questions or whatever too. Right, so if you have a website with an email capture, lead capture pop-up, then you can do a link to your website to sign up, go on my website. That way they go on your website, the pop-up comes up and you can capture them that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we won't talk too much about print material because it's focused on an online show. But um, if you are doing the tent tour, um, I think it's really important for you to have some pr print material. Um, business cards or postcards seem to work the best. Uh, people do use them, keep them, and it helps them remember you after the show. I've had lots of people use them and people who have reached out to me from as an event organizer, from somebody they um, try to get a hold of or an artist that they couldn't remember their name of from a show like five years ago and they didn't have any business cards and they had to explain I mean that we were able to connect them but I'm just saying it's so much easier if they actually had the business card I still have people like artist business cards that I keep in books so I think it's pretty cool um, I think Jamie does that he makes little um, book markers I still use it in my uh, hardcover books that I read <laughs> so it's not a bad thing to print some promotional material Um, and then we just have a little bit of um, content in regards to selling your work. I don't know if there's any other questions about the tent tour. I have what, there's one quick one here. So David's saying, if a piece is not available on Eventony, how does a person know it, person know it is available for the tent tour? So what Angela's talking about is you can actually um, shut it off so you can't actually see it on Eventony. Um, but the other thing too, is that you also could have it in both places. Um, and then if it sells in your tent tour, then you just go into your Eventony profile and market, uh, market sold. So yeah. 
Uh, or you can have a completely different body of work in your tent tour than you have on your store. There's a number of different ways to kind of um, manage that. And you have to just sort of think that through. Yeah, so it's going to be different for every artist. For sure. I know that for me, it's hard like to log on. Like you don't, if you can't log on right away and turn something off, what you don't want to happen is you don't want to sell one piece in both locations. And that did happen to um, somebody um, <laughs> with one of the art walks. <laughs> so... Um, so it's just something to, something to think about ahead of time. So we just have a couple of slides left on selling and there's really, Kate, do you wanna chat a little bit about this? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, selling is always a bit of a dirty word in this, in this environment. Um, and I'm not so sure you can totally sell someone on a piece of art or something that they don't actually love. But I think what you can do is you can really build that relationship and build that connection with you as the artist. People want to buy, as Marjorie was saying, from people they like. Um, they want to buy the work that they understand that they feel an emotional connection to. I also personally think that there's a lot of people that really are not comfortable buying art and sometimes need a, just a gentle push to give them permission to spend the money to buy a piece of art. So I think the biggest thing is, you know, bring your best work, bring your A game, really honestly and genuinely connect to people. Um, the other thing that for any of the extroverts out there in the room, also know when to shut up. <laughs> you can also talk yourself out of a sale if you're not careful. So allow the get the customer to kind of talk about what they see in your work and engage that way. And then just um, to, oh, go ahead. Nope. So oh, I was just going to say a couple of um, additional points about pricing um, to try to be consistent across the board, regardless of where you're selling, which means um, you don't want to undercut your galleries or um, your online show, or you want to see the same price for your work in different locations. Um, you don't want to present yourself differently, right, Kate? Like you want to be careful. Yeah, about and that's, that's really important, especially if you have gallery representation. Now, if you have chosen to increase your prices on Eventony because you want to be able to capture some of the, ch the costs that are there. I personally don't, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but if you are going to do that, then you need to think about what your pricing is going to be in the booth. Um, that could be an incentive um, where it's a little bit less expensive there. I always think that's a bit of a dangerous thing where you're training people to price shop your work. Um, it's important to have something at every price point. As Angela was saying, there's a lot of people um, that can't yet afford uh, big pieces, but they love the work and it's a good way to kind of get them into the uh, into your tribe. Um, I'm a huge fan of putting red dots on pieces that have sold, especially in an outdoor show. Um, people like to buy from people that are successful. And again, that comes down to people not always feeling confident in their decision making. Um, you have to think about whether or not you do commissions. You have to think about whether or not you're willing to negotiate. You have to think about if someone comes in and says they want a deal, are you comfortable with doing that? All those things will come up. So it's always better to run them through ahead of time and think about how you're going to approach that. Yeah, and make sure you know if you're collecting HST or not. Like, is the tax included? Is it not included? Um, you know, what, what's your responsibility in regards to collecting taxes? And then, you know, are you going to um, absorb them for your clients? Like, you just have to think about all of that. Um, yeah, same as discounts for multiple sales. See, these are some of the questions that people get in booths. Um, think about um, credit cards and your actual payment devices, how you're gonna process payments. Do you accept checks? I know a lot of people don't, but some people do. Um, do you deliver the work, especially larger works? A lot of people find that that's um, very helpful, um, being willing to actually take the work to a client. Um, Prepare your cash flow. That's just, I don't think there's gonna be a lot of cash flowing. We really don't recommend um, um, a lot of cash transactions, but again, that's up to the individual artists. I would just say, um, take care. I think it's always good to have some cash on you. Um, payment systems. I think we all know that uh, Stripe is the online payment system for um, through sales through Eventony. Um, and we cover that during the orientation and you can find that orientation again on the YouTube channel. Um, there's many options for in-person payment systems. Um, so you need to, if you don't have a system in place yet, you need to think about that, do your research um, and uh, set up your account soon or get those things delivered. Like if you need a square reader, you need to get, get that delivered now because it can take a couple of weeks. Uh, I think a yeah. lot of people- are Oh, sorry, I was gonna say, one of the other things is if you don't have a payment system in place and you're not sure you want to, um, you can still use Eventony as the platform for people to buy on. Like they'll be able to go onto your store on the phone, on their phone, pay for everything through there. 
Um, so that is still another way of, uh, of uh, collecting payment if you want to. Right. And um, yeah, for sure, for sure you can do it that way. You can also accept e-transfers. I did that at a show, it worked really well. I think there's a lot of people using e-transfer now that maybe weren't using e-transfer before. Um, make sure your payment systems, if you have something like Square is set to touchless. And then tip that for the show. I don't know if there's any other questions before we get here, Kate. This is, I think, our last I'm slide. Here. Well, just people are saying how many people are going to be in the tent tour. Um, we won't really know that until, uh, I guess, June 5th. Um, most of the people I'm talking to are pretty psyched to do it. I think everyone's just desperate to go and actually meet collectors in person. <laughs> yeah. Um, so after the show, regardless of online or in person, you need to follow up on your leads and be persistent. I think, Kate, I think you're always the one that says, um, keep asking until someone says no. <laughs> and I think that's that's a, a good attitude to have, right? Um, send emails. Um, Marshall always um, tells us that our email list is gold and um, don't be afraid to use it. Um, make sure that you add your anybody who signs up to your guest book, thank them for attending, and then add them to your um, e-news um, list. Um, Take time to then I think after this event, take time to evaluate how it went and where you can improve for the next one. Um, think about um, what your goals are and then think about afterwards, like, you know, what goals did you reach? Like, did you actually, um, you know, reach some of these these milestones that you wanted to hit or what could you do better next time? Um, and we always suggest delivering sold items promptly. It helps, uh, you know, continue that conversation with your clients. I don't know if there's anything else. Now you can pack it up and leave it on the curb. <laughs> yeah. So you used to be able to go in, have a glass of wine, but we'll get to that soon, hopefully. Yeah. I think most people will probably take the work with them um, in a tent tour. Um, but again, if it's a large piece or if you're selling something online, think about your delivery online as well. And we yeah. covered that in the other orientation, shipping and delivery. Like you can set it for individual um, pro products. And that's all we have. In one of the questions, uh, sorry, one of the questions we do have is how many people, how many buyers came out to the last tent tour? We didn't actually track that for the um, Art Walk in the Square, um, but I know that um, I've been involved in other tent tours where we have tracked it, and I think we will probably try and do that this year just to kind of get a, a sense of what it is. I certainly know that for me personally, I was super happy to be part of a tent tour and have, have the opportunity to talk to people. Um, it moved forward. I sold pieces, but also moved forward a couple of commissions that have been kind of languishing for a bit. So um, that's kind of your concept. Um, castle considerations. So with castle regulations, it's one of the reasons that I am very strong proponent of having my all my stuff in a guest book. I don't have a separate piece of paper. I don't have a, a, a clip or whatever. All of my show contacts for all of my shows are in one guest book. And actually at the back of the guest book, I do have the castle regulations printed out. But if someone signs up for your guest list, then that gives you the ability to communicate to them. And that is inherently the, um, um, their permission to contact you because that's yeah. why they're signing the newsletter. Sure, sure. The thing that I was, it's Janet, the thing that I was specifically yeah. thinking about was, um, you know, when you have a newsletter that you're sending out and you're sending out a group email, there's sort of automatically in that group email, like through MailChimp or whatever, there is an unsubscribe mechanism in that email um, so that's when you're sending out a group message. But I think the principle still applies if you're engaging in follow-up emails with people who maybe expressed interest in a piece and you're following up to see if they're interested. You don't have that unsubscribe mechanism. So you, I think, you, but it, you still have a similar issue. So I think you may want to include some kind of line in your signature if you're sending a follow-up email to somebody to just say, if you prefer not to, you know, receive a, you know, a further message from me, just you know, reply and write unsubscribe in the, you know, at the top of the email or something like that. Yeah. Because otherwise, otherwise you could fall afoul of that, especially if you're following up a couple of times with, with somebody about a piece. Yeah. So I, I, I what I always do too is, um, you know, I always use all of my newsletters come through MailChimp because MailChimp has a very easy unsubscribe option. My understanding of Castle, though, is that if you're in the middle of a transaction and talking about a commission uh, potentially is a transaction, um, that you are totally on side to be able to continue that conversation until someone says no. For me, what I also do throughout that conversation, though, is I ask them if they'd like to be added to my newsletter mm -hmm. um, email database, which then again, if they just choose not to down the road, they have the ability to unsubscribe. Let's 
Um, does anybody have more questions? Yeah, one thing question is how will Eventini know if you sell on cash? So first of all, you can only sell uh, through Eventini through Stripe, which would be um, would be pretty much credit card, or if they have a Stripe account, I guess. Um, so they wouldn't know. So if you're taking cash um, around the Eventini platform, then um, we would of course prefer you don't do that. But if that's what you do, I guess we can't stop you. <laughs> we can't find out. <laughs> you would take your product down off the site, right? Like you would mark your product as sold and take it off the site. Because you wouldn't you have to do that yourself. You wouldn't be yeah. hosting a like on Eventini, it'll your product can stay there and say sold. And there, I, that's up to you. You can replace it. We ask people to not have more than 30 um, pieces of artwork in their store front. And the reason we do that is because we don't want to have um, client buyer visitor fatigue, right? We want people to be able to run through different artists, get a profile, and not be running through hundreds. Plus, it's a lot of work to pull post 100 pieces of work if you're doing a good job posting your um, artwork. Um, so the idea is that you don't actually post that much work. Um, and so I think putting a sales button on your site actually works as well. So I think that would be you'd have to take it off if you didn't actually sell it through the Eventini site because there's no way to put sold if someone hasn't purchased the product through Eventini. You would just take it off the site. Um, so talking about postcards, I always use Vistaprint. Um, I find they're really good. You can create your own uh, postcard in their program or else you can actually create it in something like Photoshop and upload it. Um, I typically wait until there's a sale because they almost always have at some point a 40% off sale. Um, and that's often, especially Laurie Ryerson is really good about uploading that and putting that sale data in the um, internal Facebook page. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, any more questions? Besides all hoping that everyone has their vaccinations and we can do this show in real life and have just, maybe 25 people in our booth. <laughs> just a poll here in this group here. How many people, like put your hand up if you think you would want to be part of the tent tour. Just give me an idea. So people okay, are so, mine. Yeah. Well, you don't have to make your decisions yet. No, you don't have to make them yet, but. I don't know if there's any other questions or comments that anybody wants to make. Uh, Marjolaine, I don't know if there's anything else you want to share with the group. You may have left because she had to go at eight. Oh, that's right. Hi, David. Question. Um, you, were, you, were, you were demonstrating uh, using Square which is not going through Eventney. So um, I'm a little confused as to what I can sell in the tent using using Square. And how, like, how, <laughs> sorry, a little so, confused. So basically, David, the way it works is that if you sell online through Eventney, then they use Stripe. So you don't have a choice with that. Yeah, if you're in your tent and someone wants to purchase from you, you can either use your Square reader. And yeah. if you, sell a piece that is also on Eventini, you'll have to go onto the Eventini site and market sold manually. The other thing you can do, which might be kind of cumbersome, so it's not necessarily a great solution, is you can get someone to go on the Eventini site and purchase the piece through the site on their cell phone, right. um, and then it's already marked, marked sold. Yeah. yeah. So, so what I would do is use Eventini as my online platform, and then when I'm in person, I would either have people do like e-transfers or use my Square Reader, just because that's the platform that I use, right? Um, it's yes. not really a problem at the back end to have two different pay platforms. Um, Eventini totally knows that we're doing hosting, um, a, you know, a tent tour that people will be able to take their product down and will be selling pieces um, in person versus on site. There's nothing wrong with that. Like you, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Okay. And I'm finding certainly in the last year, people are way more open to sending and accepting e-transfers. Okay, so if I can put all of my work on Eventme, let's say 20 pieces, yep. and of those 20 pieces, I have 10 in the tent, but I don't, I don't indicate that they're, what was it, uh, not available. And when I, and oh, the sun shines that I sell a piece uh, in the tent, then I go online and say it's sold. Yeah. I can, yeah. I can say it's sold. 
I've never yeah. had to do that. <laughs> so, well, hopefully you will. <laughs> yeah, right. No, no, but I can't. Like, I think I, you, you, what you would do is you can turn that product off so people can still see the image of the product, but they can't actually buy it there and they can't see the price and it won't say sold. Because the only way for something to show sold on the Eventny platform is it to sell through the Eventny platform, but you can turn the product off. And when you, I, if you go to the other orientation and you take a look at it, we actually demonstrated that or um, you can give me a call and I can walk you through it, David, but you can actually turn off your product, which means your product can still showcase there so someone can see an image of it, cool. but it won't be for sale and it won't say sold. I, I, am I being, do you yep. understand what I'm saying? Sort of, yeah, okay. I, I just, I guess I just missed that connection to be able to sell it. Anyway, um, okay, sh sh sort of, thank you. <laughs> we can help you walk, we can walk you through that. Okay, I think okay. if, if you, once you actually um, familiar, upload your work in the back end of Eventny and you familiarize yourself with it, I think it'll, some of that will come clear because you can start to toggle things and see how you can turn things on and off. Okay. I was wondering if to get kind of the, the equivalent effect of the little red sticker on your art on Eventny, you could actually, as I said, if you toggled it off so that it's not for sale anymore, but you still have the image in the description, you could actually put in the description, you know, sold, exclamation mark and that yes, way people that way people can actually see the success of your work and that might make them in, you know make them interested yeah i'd have to go back and see if the entire description and everything still shows up mm -hmm. um if the product's not on i don't know i think it does but i just i i mean i think that's a good idea Hang on, i can go in, let me like go in you right now say soul for soul during the art walk tour or the tent tour or something mm -hmm. right soul during open mm -hmm. weekend or something just sold generally just yeah yeah i was just going to see if i can change it actually available for sale no yeah it seems to be available for sale or not available for sale all right is there any other comments or questions Uh, yes, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I don't get out much. It's okay. <laughs> Quick question on 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 the. Uh, it's nothing to do with the tent, but it's on the on my business. It says on my business part. It on my event. It says business page. Business business page work. What is that? It's it's a whole series of numbers, and I can change it to. But what do I change it to? Sorry, can you repeat the question? It's on the business page it's on your on business profile. Business profile, yes. And and it's called business page. Sorry, I can't read my own writing, but anyway, down a little bit. And it's a series of blue numbers. I'm not sure. Like I think maybe that's probably something we can maybe take off. Maybe, maybe yeah, David, okay. give me a call tomorrow yeah, and I'll pull okay. up my profile because I don't know I know that so on their business page on your business profile if you scroll down a little ways there is a blue blue type that's a link I think it's that's blue it. and you can is that it yeah oh okay yes. so you want to copy that because that's the link to your personal profile so when you're sending out your communications what you want to do is you want to profile and and send out the overall event link like the this is how to get to the overall platform all the artists this is here what a great show I'm part of this great show and here's the personal link to my profile. And okay. that's that blue link. There's the, it's you. a long stream of copy and there's like, uh, probably that's what you're saying, the numbers at the end, 6854 yeah. or something, yeah. that four digit yeah. number. You copy that entire link. And if you put that in your newsletter and if you put that in your communications and someone clicks on that, it goes right to your profile. Thank you. Uh, is that what Thank you were you. talking about maybe? Yeah. Exactly, yes. Thank you. So you want to you want to keep that link. You want to yes, copy I, that. I, I must have been asleep at the last. Anyway. Okay. Well, that's a lot of stuff. There's also another question about the eventy charge. So the, the fee that eventy charges, some of it is a charge to use the eventy platform, and some of it is actually the Stripe uh, charge that gets passed on through eventy that you would also have to pay if you use PayPal or Square or anything like that. I think it's was it seven percent in total. Something like uh, that. Yeah. I think eventy is five percent. I have to go double check. It's actually part of the. It's on the submission page. Um, if somebody wants to email me, I can I can email you back. I think it's five percent, and then there's your regular Stripe account fees, which is one point eight percent or close to two percent, and then there's a thirty cent 
transaction fee. I think this is the same thing with PayPal as, as Stripe. Um, I think they're very, very close. But if you're at all concerned, you get the whole breakdown when you go into, if you take a look at the last orientation, um, when you go to your um, account settings, click on that, um, you'll get uh, your main page up in Eventini. I could, I don't know, I could share that for a minute if people are interested. Well, Steve also has a question too. I don't know if Steve, your hand is raised. If you. Oh, I think that's because he wants to be part of the tent tour. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, so, but when you click on that, there's the one that you go to like your business profile, but there's also payouts and payments. And so you click on that and you can export. So all the payments and everything you can export. So you can see all your payments and stuff, but when you actually hit the export button, there's even more data there than on the data of the screen that you actually visually see. So I just would recommend you always export the data. And then in there, it's all the breakouts, where the fees went, what was the Stripe fee, what That's was the, whatever, your tax. Yeah. I was going to say, I've got it up if we wanted to share it, but I think we kind of covered that, I think, in the other orientation. Yeah. So if there's not a lot of questions on it, I won't pull it up because we it's almost 8.30. So if there's any other questions, if not, I'll say have an awesome show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thank looking you. forward to seeing everybody's new collections. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh, it's going to be good. Thank you awesome. very much, guys. So good luck to everybody. And don't hesitate to send me an email if you have a question or you have a concern. Yeah, but I would also recommend you first go to the internal Facebook page because um, there's a huge amount of information there. And there's a lot of people who've done a lot of these shows before. So um, there's a lot to be learned from those internal Facebook pages. Yeah, and if you're having challenges on the Eventini site, there's all these tutorial videos. They're all, they're walking through every single step and they actually make a lot of really good recommendations. So you can take a look at that as well. Where is that, Angela? So when you go into your, to build your business profile, so you do your account settings, business profile. I think I've said that lots of times. I hopefully people know that. Click, click. Yeah. You go in there and then there's so you set up your thing, your name, your website and all that. On the right-hand side, in the right-hand column, there's a whole bunch of tutorials. Okay. They've got, they've broken the entire thing out into like six steps. So if you're, some of the stuff you might not be interested in, um, you just click on those. They're all about like five to eight minutes long and they kind of walk you through stuff. So just take a look at those. And then we've covered a lot in our orientation as well. That's probably your first bet just to go there and just slowly walk you through it. You can stop it. Um, and also, um, so just people, you know, I don't really work full time on this, on this um, art show, but if you're having a hard time, you need the answer right away. You can also reach out to Eventini. They have an awesome like support team there. So if there's a question about the platform, like you could just go down, if you scroll down to the bottom of any of those pages that you're on, um, I think actually when, even when you're in your business profile, but for sure when you're just on the website, the Eventini website, there's a contact. That contact um, emails, they go directly to their, um, their staff, their um, and they're staff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're all, they, like, it's a young team and they're a growing team and they're awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, Thank are you, you going to do the tent tour? Thank nice you. to see a lot of familiar faces. I wish I was seeing you in the tents and at uh, Jimmy Simpson, but hopefully soon. Yeah, same here. That would be yeah. great. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> For sure. And lots I'm of so new generous. faces, too. Okay, well, I think if, we're, if we don't have any more questions, Thank I think you. we'll probably just shut it down. And this has been recorded, so Ange will send out the link so that if you feel you want to listen to everything again, you can do that. Good.